Now, okay, so here's the other thing. Do you understand that magma is like this completely just this gelatinous molten of all of these different minerals and all these different rocks that have been melted down? But not every source of magma is the same. They're not composed of the same stuff, they're not they're the same melted material. And the classification of the magma actually will determine what type of igneous rock you get. And so when we look at magma, it's basically classified on a lot of different things. It's classified based on mostly on the silica content. Okay, so remember we talk about silica, that's your SiO4. Uh, anybody been to a beach before? Yeah. Okay. Pick up the, you remember actually held the grains of sand before? And I know you're not going to admit this, but I know everybody's done it. Have you ever actually looked at them closely? Yeah. Have you ever actually, or at least looked at a single grain before? And sometimes they're a little clear, a little odd shape, but they're clear. All right, that's pure silicate. All right, that's that right there. And it's actually very clear. It's like basically quartz is like pure silica. But what happens is when you melt the silica, okay, how do we get glass? What do they do? They melt the sand. Have you ever seen melted glass before? Very gooey, right? Okay. It's very plastic, very gooey. Now, what's important about this is the higher the silica content, it actually acts like a glue, and it's very thick. And that thickness which actually uh, related to something called viscous or viscosity. Viscous is a fluid's resistance to flow. How many of you guys have ever used the Caro syrup before? Use it for cake and stuff. Yeah, so Caro syrup. Oh, yeah, I've had that before too. Right? And it actually does help. But basically it's like molasses, right? It's this really, really thick stuff and you try to pour it out of the bottle and it's just slowly oozing out of the bottle. So it's very, very thick. That's what we talk about being viscous. It's very resistant to flowing. Okay? And so we also refer to that, the level of its viscous, it's called viscosity. So we say that something has a high viscosity, it means it's really resistant to flowing. It doesn't want to move that much. And if it has a low viscosity, it flows very easily, somewhere in water. And so water has a very, very low viscosity. So silica, in its melted form, is very viscous. And basically, it kind of gunks things up and it prevents things from moving. And that's actually why we get very, very explosive volcanic eruptions. Yes. Every rock Yes. Every What about the rocks that are like out in the ground? Yes. What are the Like a hands. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Those are actually fragments from other rocks. Okay. What was the most specific? Then on the dollar. All right, so most of the, all right, so if you guys, we might do this at the end of the week. If you guys go out here along the south side of the building, they have all the rocks lining up on this side of the building, right? There's basically uh, four, maybe five types of rocks that make up that entire picture. Marble, basalt, granite, sandstone, and limestone is definitely one of them. So I say those are the top four that they use as fill. So actually, we're on here. I'm show you guys all the different ones that are out there. That is, you actually can find your own stuff. So we look at magma itself. Like I said, there are four main things to keep in mind: there's temperature, pressure, water content. And mineral composition. Those are the four things that should dictate what type of igneous rock we're going to get from the back. Yeah. So 
Last one was mineral composition. All right. Now, this is actually a piece where we really need to talk, and I really need you guys on board here. This, for whatever reason, it's been the really good. <laughs> When we look at the two processes here, we'll, we'll basically talk about partial melting and fractional crystallization. For whatever reason, this is something that a lot of students have this difficult time truly understanding. With partial melting, what that means, and it's very similar to you guys in here, right? We all know that every student learns at a different rate, correct? Some of you guys learn very fast. Some of you guys, it takes you know, the same thing 100 times before you finally get it. Okay, and that's basically it. We just learn at different rates. Well, every mineral has a unique melting point. And so they don't always melt at the same rate. So when you look at granite, and let's say we want to melt down the granite into its molten forms. Well, the feldspar and the biotite are going to melt at different rates. So you actually get this partial melting of the rock. We actually get a little basically it becomes porous because those other minerals are melting out of it. And, and so that's basically called partial melting where the different minerals are melting at different rates, at different temperatures. On the flip side of that, we have this thing called fractional crystallization, which when we look at the geo that went around, you guys notice that it was layered, right? You guys can see the wavy layers in there. That's a perfect example of fractional crystallization. Because what happens is we talk about partial melting. So we have a thousand degrees Celsius, we're moving up to five thousand degrees Celsius. And then you have all these minerals within these rocks. And as this temperature is increasing, let's say I have five minerals, A, B, C, D, and E. Which mineral is going to melt first? As I start increasing the temperature, which mineral melts first? Okay, so E or A, which one is it? Why A? Yeah, as my temperature increases, these are their melting temperatures. So as my temperature increases, mineral A is going to melt first. Okay. And then eventually what happens to mineral C? That melts next, then B, then E, and then finally mineral D. Okay, we're melting at different rates, at different temperatures. Now that's in the melting process. It's now completely molten. Now my magma starts to cool. Who crystallizes first? D would actually crystallize first. Why is that? It has a higher melting temperature. And as soon as you go below that melting temperature, what happens? It immediately crystallizes. So as long as D has a very high melting point, that's the first to crystallize. And so when we think about fractional crystallization, it's in the reverse order of the way that they melted. So we can crystallize with the highest melting temperature first, and then we finally have the lowest melting temperature being the last to crystallize. And so when you look at that geode that's going around the room, that's how those layers are formed in the geode. Those are your different minerals that are melt, that are basically crystallizing because those are the edges that are cooling as you move toward the center. Does that make sense? Sure, Mr. Thomas, what do you want to say? We agree. Uh, that's 
hospitals, but in Colorado.